Okay, so after some tremendous code cleanup, I have built a, um, a bit more rugged a prototype um, so that it can actually um, go sitting um, on the telescope and not be a breadboard with wires flying off of it and, you know, everything's now a soldered connection except for what will actually be connectors here and what will actually be a connector here and then if we need to flash it we can always use a USB. Um, I'll probably have to get more light on that eventually but just uh, just a quick uh, quick test and then throw it onto the telescope and then make sure that all of the uh, the sensors on the telescope haven't been damaged over time so that is the the attitude uh, the altitude sensor, so this sits beside the uh, beside the, the uh, optical tube and senses rotation that way. And then there's one that's mounted on the uh, on the uh, on the base of the telescope, and it measures the rotation going this way. And uh, yeah, so um, didn't put the rotor encoder on here yet, or probably I won't, or because first of all, there's not enough room for the Schmidt trigger, and well. I, I might re-implement that. Schmidt trigger is just something more simple, like a uh, an RC filter um, for doing the debouncing of the switch, because that thing really needs debouncing. But um, but yeah. Anyways, that's uh, that's the next update. That should hold for a little while. Display packaging. Okay, encoders installed on the telescope. <laughs> that's all. That's not jumping around at all. Uh, we can measure the head of one of those screws because it's about one and a half times that whatever that distance is. Rotate display comes in handy. That one's rock solid. So the um, the one that was the azimuth or uh, attitude, oh, the azimuth sensor, is totally stable when the uh, magnet's correctly positioned. I think I might have the magnet too close um, on the telescope buster, but we can test that quickly. Um, and then I'm going to test the, the one on the altitude mount as well. So I took out the foam, so that's probably an eighth of an inch in there, and then I'll just see what more spacers I need. What I did. Solid. That's okay. the best of Cordara Orchestra. Can I help me out, Sadie? What do you think it is? Why? Why is it not working when there are two? Why is it doing that? It's matching the cable link. Holy snap, so there was some reflections. I guess I have to learn about signaling and transmission lines and... That's amazing. Okay, so. When I had these blue, this blue pair plugged in, which was the test, which was the test environment, um, it was totally fine. I would I would get um, readings from both, but then when I plugged it into my scope, either one I could get working, but not both of them together. And the reason, well, this is my theory so far. I've got one data point. I've adjusted the cable length on one of the. I, then I tried plugging in various combinations of all of my different sensors. So um, that sensor was off of the um, attitude bearing, 
Um, and then I plugged them in all different combinations. The only combination that worked was the blue pair. And the only difference between the blue pair and any of the other pairs, any of the other cables, was the blue pair were roughly the same length, within a centimeter or so. So, yeah, all right, fair enough. Let's see if I can um, make another one that is the same length as the blue pair and then get them to work together. And sure enough, that's what it was. Oh, my gosh. Um, at least I've got two working um, sensor or three working sensors. I'll adjust the length of the cable on the other sensor, and then we'll see if we get the pair that go back with the telescope working in harmony. But, um, yeah, I think I'm on the right track. Holy, holy. All right, those two are vastly different in length, but and they don't work together. So let's just verify that. And there we go. Okay, one of them's not working, but either one of them by themselves is stable. But when they're together, one of them is unstable. So, length. So, and these cables are unequal lengths. So let's get the lengths the same and see if they work in harmony. Okay, new encoders installed, all nicely lined up, plugged in, and seems to be steady. Yeah, steady. Okay, Let's see if we can get the other one working. Okay, tube is in, and I think I've got stable encoders. Yes. Yes, seems to be working. Hallelujah. Okay, so because of the good folks at UMG, they um, are not allowing uh, this video to be released because they, um, they have a copyright claim on the music that I was listening to on the radio. So, um, anybody who wants to buy music from UMG, I don't think I'm going to be buying any music by artists that are being released by UMG because, you know, f the copyright police. Anyways, um, so as I was cleaning up one of the, uh, cleaning up the azimuth, or the alt uh, azimuth sensor, it, um, it did that. It just basically shattered while I was putting absolutely no pressure on it. So my theory is that either the, um, the surface is treated in, in some special way so that it makes it impervious to solvents and that when you um, when you score it or if you um, drill through it you open up um, a way for solvents to get inside the uh, the plastic and it um, will release the stress now I'm not sure whether or not it was the uh, rubbing alcohol or whether or not it was the um, citrus cleaner that actually created that problem to begin with um, or that weakened the material but when it exploded in my hand it was um, rubbing alcohol so I might try and do some experiments with with uh, and I think that's acrylic I'm pretty sure it's acrylic um, do some experiments with acrylic to see whether or not um, if you have stresses in the in the acrylic you can release those stresses by just um, putting a, a dab of um, rubbing alcohol on them or whether or not it was the citrus cleaner and it uh, is a problem that manifested itself maybe after an hour of work anyways um and after an hour of sitting there anyways so um that led me down the um the path of having to rebuild the mounting plate for the um uh the azimuth sensor and 
uh, so here's a few um, a few pieces of uh, video on the process for creating a new azimuth sensor mount. So what I did was I was doing two plates rather than one plate. One the bottom plate held the sensor and has larger holes so that you can translate the uh, the bottom plate around, and then the top plate has holes that are fitted to the uh, to the mounting holes and that acts as a clamp. So yeah, that's what the next. So we can install those in there for better clamping, less likely to bump loose. for his role in the war. He's offered any reward he wants. Okay. New encoders installed. Okay, that's the bearings. Which I just imagine is accumulated dust that collects in the grooves and it's just getting scraped off of there. That's just very light. It's not scored or anything like that. It's very fine powder, so I think just cleaning it up will be sufficient. Okay, let's clean that up and give it a new well, give it a coat of varnish. Light sanding with 500 in between coats.